Every one of you watching this screen, look out. Anything can happen in the next half hour. What did I tell you about cartoons? They've got a lot of brains, and they've got a lot of kutzpah. Tell me how comic books make you feel, Dave. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious, and don't call me sure. Hi, this is Jim Bridges, and I'm the president of the Australian Cartoon Museum. And I'm Paul Harvey, and I'm not the president of the Australian Cartoon no, Museum. No, he's not. He, but he used to be the vice president I did. of the Australian I did. Cartoon Museum. I and did. here we are in downtown, wonderful Docklands. I was knifed in the back. Knifed? Yeah. I thought it was in the front. In the front. Um, you must have turned. And today, we're going to look at the great Noel Coonahan, one of Australia's uh, greatest artists, and probably... The One of its greatest caricatures. And could do anything, this guy. This good, and we're going to prove it with this book. We are indeed. So this, this is a book that's been put out by Vane Lindsay, who's the, and it's uh, published by... Uh, the patriarch of everybody. It's published by Hutchison of Australia. Indeed. And look at that beautiful... So the beauty of um, Coonahan was that he, he could uh, draw in any style, he could paint in any style, he, he did... Line of cuts and he did. graphs and, he did. Um, and everything. So, Vane's um, collected um, a book full of his um, caricatures and put yeah. this book together. In Vane knew him personally and had access to original work. So the the, the book, uh, like everything Vane does, is really high quality. You're not arguing with that? No, it, it, Vane, everything Vane did was high quality. Vane was uh, Vane knew Coonahan well. He would. They were both. Um, Mad South Melbourne supporters, <laughs> and uh, I thought you said they were mad communists. And it? mad communists, so <laughs> <laughs> they had a lot in common. Well, that's that's Noel. That's a self-portrait. Yeah, that's self-portrait. And beautiful, very simple. Yeah, very, but beautiful line still. Beautiful yeah. line. Yeah. So this is the man himself. So, 19, 1984. So I discovered um, Coonahan through his football caricatures, being yes. a football caricaturist myself, and. I discovered a little scrapbook of his work um, that somebody had cut down a Varna uh, uh, textbook and had cut down and stuck a whole lot of um, Jim Adina oh, and Noel exor- Coonahan's... exercise book. Exercise book. Yeah. Okay, yeah. What did I say? You said, you said textbook. Textbook, uh, exercise book. Yeah. yeah so Yavana. I'm a bit younger than you. And um, Just a bit. I discovered him there. So I discovered his beautiful footy um, caricatures and then yeah. this book. Um, in fact, I think over the years I've had about 10 copies of this book. And it's uh, some yes. of the most beautiful work. I, I've given a few of them away myself. And this is 1934. Yep. Um, e. Floyd. Can you just pass me those notes down there? Oh, oh shrapnel. Oh. Just trying to bend over. Okay, so Make I'll as much racket as possible. I've got some, oh, sorry. So, um, this is Bernard Hines, who was a, a conductor. And this is done in 36 with brush, ink, and crayon. That's crayon. So Noel was built, born at a very young age, yes. uh, 1913, in Albert Park. In Albert Park? Yeah, which was a very... Is that why he barracks for South Melbourne? Indeed, indeed. Okay. And it was a very working class area when... It when, was. Uh, it was a bit of a slum, actually, if oh, I remember. Yeah, it was. Yeah, quite amazing, because the price is um, South Melbourne now. So these, I think, I think most of these work, this is 37, I think most of this stuff ended up, this, it actually was originally published in the Bulletin. Yeah, well, so... And like they had a page full of car- uh, stories about individuals in the news and they just illustrated them um, with caricatures. Um, and it's an old tradition. Of, I mean, even um, Will Dyson, in, uh, before he went over to England, was doing them. Now, this is an early Red Jan, set 1937. So he became a... Um, so he went to the uh, St Paul's Cathedral Choir School. Ah, I know what that is. Yeah? Yeah. And then uh, on to Caulfield Grammar. And um, he started work, he, he did some um, pencil illustra- caricatures and was noticed by the editor of the Argus who put him on for a short time and he was working at the Argus. Yes. Uh, doing caricatures. Yes. Um, 
and the Argus was um, a very uh, a very popular newspaper because it had um, it was the first paper in, in Australia to get colour comics in yeah. in the in the centre for the kids to look at, and also um, they never had cartoonists and they got um, Mick Armstrong as their cartoonist. Mm-hmm. Um, and they only had one political cartoonist, so he was obviously doing characters. I didn't know he worked for the Argus. Now look at the simple lines here. Very, just, very, um, what, what would you say, slightly Art Deco? Very, very. Yeah. So, so he, uh, well, I'll keep talking about him. Because yeah, he, um, he studied art at, uh, at uh, the NGV school. And, and That's the National Gallery of Victoria. And his lecturers at the time were, um, were, Commies and a couple of commies, and they. So he loved the. Uh, he called it social realist art. Okay. So what they did was they they showed society. He liked to draw society as it is under capitalism, right? Yes. Um, and then sort of when he finished, uh, so he really he was a staunch uh, communist right through his life, and used to go during the depression would. Um, he was even arrested for locking himself in a cage and having to be cut out. I, I, I remember that. He was also banned from television and radio. Was he? Yep. And <coughs> excuse me, he was banned from um, newspapers. And his name was Noel, but he had all these things. He called himself Leon, which is Noel spelled backwards. Yeah, right. I, I've got a couple of pieces. Yeah. Leon one. Now these are all. These aren't the usual things he did because. Uh, he's, he's, I mean, these are the official things he did of famous Australians, you know. Yeah. Oh, well, see, he worked at the Bulletin for a while. Yeah. Um, and then sort still, of... Still pretty early, 37. Yeah, left the Bulletin when he decided that their politics didn't gel. Yeah, because the right, um, it was very right, well, not completely right wing, but they were very, they were very uh, anti-Labor, let's put it that way. Yeah, he worked the whole time at The Guardian as well. So this is interesting, you've got this sort of... That's pretty basic, and then you do all this outside stuff. Beautiful. So, so what blew me away about the first time I saw him was just this the, the thick and the thin line and the and the yeah. loose, clever brushstroke. You know, he's just uh, he's just a beautiful artist. It's amazing. Yeah, um, um, it's taken me a while. I mean, it hadn't taken me that one, but I I, I concede that he is probably a better caricaturist than George Finey. Well... And that's saying something. Well, he was heavily influenced by Finey, so... Yes, he was. See, the 30s, as you well know, um, the 30s was the golden age of caricature. All the newspapers had caricaturists working. We had, you know, Wells in the Age. We had Finey yeah. working in Table Talk. We had... Yeah, yeah. Um, well, you had a lot more t- working in Table Talk. Lionel Coventry working in the Bulletin. Yes. This beautiful um, yep. avant-garde line and... Um, and Finey is influenced by them all, but I think they're all influenced by... Um, sorry, yep. Cunahan was influenced by them all, the, but they were... Well, even in that picture, you can see the influence of Finey. You can. But it's just that um, he pushed it more than most of them. He turned people into pretzels, whereas Cunahan didn't really do that, did he? There's a lovely story about his drawing of uh, Mannix, because he, he was working at the Bulletin at the time, and he did one of Mannix, and they said, Oh, look, we just better check with the church whether we should go with that. And he took it down to St Pat's and spoke to a priest there who said, oh, you can't do that. Um, so he had to redraw him. And then he, he drew this one later in 37. OK. Which was uh, in Table Talk, I believe. OK. Yeah, um, they're not actually telling you where they're from. Um, oh. Neville Carter's cricket people know him. He's a commentator. Yeah. yeah. And he wrote books. He was knighted in 1975. But the brush and the ink, the brush... I mean, I, I think what's great about him is his line. It's just... Oh, you know, his line's beautiful. And plus the amount of lines he uses, like the hair, totally out of character of what we've so seen. So he was a restless soul. He travelled around. He, he spent a bit of time in New Zealand where he met his wife and um, drew over there. And he, he travelled through the states of uh, Australia, drawing for the different newspapers as he went. Um, I think a lot of them used um, um, Lowe's... Uh, loaded. A lot of cartoonists did that. To get around Australia, they'd, they'd call in and go to a pub and they'd draw the, the, the proprietor. The proprietor, and then because and they'd stick it up on the wall, them. yeah. And then all these other blokes would come in and he'd get to know oh, Coventry, everybody very Coventry quickly. Used to do that. Yeah, apparently well, the pubs in South Australia are full of Lionel Coventry yes, caricatures. Yeah, that's my dream. Just to bloody travel around Australia, grey nomad, 
draw on punters for my lunch. It's great. Really? Uh, well, you're not that grey yet. Everything. You're not that grey yet. Well, uh, you've got to have hair to go grey. Hair today and gone tomorrow. Now, Listo Crayon on grain to paper. Oh. So, Listo Crayon is basically what? Yeah, I think it would be the lithographer's crayon that he used to, ah. to mark up work. Well, that's what. I'm um, isn't that what Dormier used? Well, maybe. It looks a very Dormier feel. Yeah. This wonderful. Wonderful character. Yeah, yeah love this guy's squashed down all that information. So, so he's the. Uh, so this might have been his prime minister of New Zealand. So that might have been when he was travelling. Yeah, and meeting his missus. Yes, the Bishop of Auckland. So yeah, yeah this is we're going through the New Zealand period now. Look at all this up here. Yeah. And he drew from life. Um, you know, he. he he, Not a photo man? So just after the war, he went to... Um, he wanted to go and study art in Europe, in the UK and Europe, yeah. and uh, jumped on a boat. Um, sped the war with tuberculosis, apparently. Not a well man. It's interesting how his styles changed. Yeah. Using much more of the life they crayon when he got to New Zealand. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I've always liked the crayon. I mean, also, there are other artists at this time using his um, fits... Fitz, Fitz James in America was using this, uh -huh. and so was another guy who was a, uh, who wrote for a commun uh, who drew cartoons and caricatures for a communist magazine, The Masses or something in um, America. Now this is an interesting face, isn't it? Love the hair. Daniel Giles Sullivan, Minister of Railways, Industry and Commerce, Scientific and Industrial Research, State Iron and Steel, and the Minister of Supply in Savage Labor Government. In the savage life of <laughs> um, it's interesting because these guys you don't have no idea what they they were, and you read this, mm. but there's this, you know, they, they they're alive, they're alive, they're just drawings from the past, but they're alive. Look at that mouth. Yep, that's all it is. Just so little. It's probably dead now, but yeah, it, it definitely is. Yeah. I love this. You know, this just blew me away the first time I saw this. Well, this is this is how the Germans in Simplicimus magazine were yeah. doing stuff. Well, he was heavily he century. was heavily influenced by Simplicimus magazine yeah. and the German caricaturists. Yeah, I mean, it really was. It was the golden age of caricature. I mean, all the newspapers had caricature. Yeah, look. I mean, it, look at the fun he's having here it's with, with this with this. Um, well, it is a face, but it, he's just having fun with that line, isn't he? Newspapers, um, you know. Caricature will see out newspapers. Well, that's my, I, thought, my theory, I've got this theory that the first cartoon ever done was a caricature of a bloke running a tribe on a wall somewhere in a caveman and, and they, had a, they had a stick up his ass or something like that and everybody laughed at it, you know, because they knew who it was. H.G. Wells. So that's your theory? My, so first, the first um, cartoon oh, was a caricature, yeah, that's my theory. I wasn't there, so I won't argue. I love just, um, just the other the other thing that inspired me, but or that I found inspiring looking at Coventry, uh, Coonahan was the uh, and Coventry, but Coonahan was the fact he'd leave things out. Yes, in particular this guy. Um, this is all done by um, no, that's a pen, isn't it? But the rest of it's done by by brush. Yeah, brush and pen. Yeah, very it's easy. mostly br brush, isn't it? Yep. Very and very low stroke. Yeah. So yeah, so uh, he travelled off after the war. Travelled to UK and started. Um, he got a card to go to the House of Commons and sat there drawing politicians and producing oh, okay. caricatures for the. Um, yep, the, the aristocracy. The Daily Mail. Over in the okay, I, I didn't know anything about that. I, I have to check him he up. Drew from life. You know, if he used you to follow people and draw them. Well, that's the best way. That, I think that's. A, I mean, Da Vinci did that. Yeah. But they didn't have photography. He hadn't invented it yet. Yeah, exactly. The other thing about this stuff, as you turn the page, it's a different style. Now, I reckon this, personally, is the best Bradman I've ever seen. Ever done. Ever done. Mm. And everybody looked at it, they fell in love with it, and they all tried to copy it their own particular way. Yeah. Mm. And that's, you know, that heck, <laughs> that is something I would never do. Like, this is... This is a bald Bradman. Yeah. This is a this is a huge Bradman, and yet it works. Yeah. And the other thing is, you don't see the eyes. You don't have to. Oh, I love that. Can you, you know, can you just eyes. talk about that for a bit longer while I go and do something? Yeah. So Don Bradman was a good cricketer, apparently. Um, 
Yeah, they said the boy from Barrel, probably the greatest cricketer ever. Uh, teetotaler. Um, not a great fan of Catholics, I'm told. Uh, a lot of cricketers didn't like him much. He was um, that played with him at the time. But uh, a wise man once said, never we on a monument, so I'm not going to sit here and badmouth Bradman. What a wonderful man. Oh, it's all right. I, I was and he be... signed everything, the Don. He like signed he, um, everything. He signed everything. Well, he was putting, he wanted money to go, the Barrel Museum started when he was still here, because he lived to a, the ripe old age of 96, I Well, he, he got to see the Barrel Museum open. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. didn't know oh, that. Oh, he might have seen it open, but he knew it was coming, oh, and yeah. so he, he... Because he grew up in Barrel. Yeah, he sold caricatures, uh, uh, signatures for... Um, oh, for and the... he also didn't want things to be worth a lot of money, so he signed everything. So there's a lot of Bradman signed things out there, but he, they still go for great in, money. He lived in Adelaide, didn't he? Yeah, greatest, uh, yeah. yeah, greatest cricketer ever. Became mellowed with age, but he was a hard man at the time. He was a hard man. Yeah, he was a mason. So I remember um, there's a great story where Greg Chapel said to him one day, "How um, how did you keep fit in your day, Don?" And he said, "Running between the wickets, son." <laughs> Now this is typical of him because I, you get the feeling he doesn't have to draw eyes, don't you? Yeah, he doesn't need to. Yeah, because yeah. this is what everybody knows about this bloke, you know. Keith Miller was a handsome man. He was a good looking man. He was a good looking man. Footballer. Yep. Cricketer. And um, lover of royalty. Really? Mm. Which, which particular royals did he love the most? <laughs> A pardon? That's a good story. Oh, so well, maybe not share it here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like I like this way he does. Like he's got this lovely line. The but great then he... Keith Miller story is, um, you know, they said as a cricketer, they said, "Did you feel under pressure when you were facing up to the fast bowlers?" And he said, "Pressure is a measure Schmidt up your ass." Because he was a fighter pilot. Ah, a measure Schmidt. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's pressure, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, he used to own a sports store. Yeah, this Lindsay bloke, didn't he? It. So yeah. Lindsay, yeah. but look at the. So he's put all the work in the eyes. Yeah, just well fun. under the eye. Ah, oh, just fantastic. Yeah, and, really look, is, and look, uh, look at this. Look at this. I'm a, he's I, referring to him that he's actually a small guy. Ladies and gentlemen, I know I'm gushing a bit, but this guy, um, I think he's the greatest caricature Australia's ever had. There you go. Again, I say it again. I mean, fine, he's great, but this guy, like, we'll show some footy stuff in a second, and I remember going and meeting some of these old players. Yeah. I look at them across the room. And you say, I know Premiership him. Players Club. Yeah. And I'd go, I know that face. From, yeah. And then I'd be introduced to them and I knew them from these characters. Well, that's that's my characters. experience. That's my experience with, with Finey and um, and this guy too. Mm. See, see he's, he's starting to break the line. Yep. The teeth don't even go, you know, sort yep. of... He, he just needs little bits well, of the moustache. As a, and as a life character, it's just another one that's like you. Some, yeah. You don't draw all the lines, you know. Yeah. You, you, He's drawn all the lines here. Yeah, so the, so he did... Um, he, he did this, this is 46. Yeah, so the, after the war, he's working with the Sun, and he yeah. did uh, footballers. Yes. Okay, so... But the, they were probably small, weren't they? In, in like very small, the, yeah, very small. Yeah, and um, you, you can tell how um, Webb was obviously inspired by, by Coonahan. Yes. Just looking at a, at a picture like that. Oh, very much, yeah, very yeah. much. Well, and actually, Webb knew that guy. You know, like, to, to yeah, so Webb used to um, have a kick... Uh, with well, Dick Reynolds they, after training. So Dick Reynolds was they, at the Bombers at 16. Yeah, they, they lived in the same street as kids. Yeah, at the Feldy Street in Essendon. Oh, I'm impressed. Anything else you want to know? Um, yeah, who's going to win the grand final this year? Oh, probably the Lions. That'll be the day, as John Wayne would say, in the searches. Now, That's where there's... So Buddy Holly walked out of the... Oh, we told that story yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> we told the story yesterday. <laughs> The great uh, Norm Smith. Well, yeah, well, after the medal, they named the medal after him. I like, I like the, t the different types of noses. Yeah, in the one picture. Yeah, very much. You know? Yeah, well, a lot of his characters are like that. They're, yeah. they're two different people. And I like these goldfish, the goldfish mm. for an eye. You know, fantastic. And the use of the mesut in the hair because he was a yeah. redhead. Yeah, was he? And now, this, this is, this I is think another this is the greatest thing. Jack Dyer ever drawn. Yeah, I, I actually. Fell in love with this picture before the Bradman. It looks so good up big. You know, that, and I, uh, I blew it up and we put it up in an exhibition. Wall size. That should be wall size. Yeah. When when we have, when the the cartoon museum is up and really kicking. Yeah. We're going to have a whole wall. Yes. We're going to have a whole room devoted devoted to football caricature, and we're going to have that on a whole wall on its own. I agree with you. I mean, this is almost sculptural. That's how good it is. Ah, it's magnificent. 
Yeah. And the thickness, the thinness, and the little bit here for the, you know. I said, I said, I never met Jack. I went to his funeral, funnily enough. Did you? Oh, I did. That was nice. Oh, I just love the guy. But I sat next to him at a thing, and I never tapped in. I just, I only, he was the only football I ever wanted to meet. And it was a television show, and I sat behind him, and he was talking to his mates. I was sitting next to, I was, somehow I found myself amongst all the Wittrum players. Yeah. But I, um, I didn't have the heart to tap him on the shoulder. And someone said to me, oh, he would have loved it. He said, you know, that you live in Richmond. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, he would have yeah. loved to have chatted to you. And then yeah. he, he, he died not long after. So that must yeah. have been... At his funeral, fun. I remember they had a, they had a tiger skin draped oh, no. over his coffin. Yeah, it's a very famous tiger. It's the Richmond tiger skin. And that tiger, would you believe, ate, I think, eight or 13 people. Oh, look, this And is, he was shot. This. And he was shot. And Richmond bought the skin. I and think, they drag it out for, I, the, for the great old I think funerals. Richmond Football Club was skinned, personally. <laughs> I can't believe that story. But my mother, when I was a kid, was barracked, in India. my it, mother barracked for it Richmond. was shot in India and it had and it, uh, eaten uh, a few. Oh, it looks like an African tiger to me. Anyway, oh, really? my mum, my mum. Have tigers in Africa, Jimmy. Oh, you don't interfere Sorry. a good story with the facts. In the, in yeah, the, in the way of a as Don story. Don Quixote would say, "Facts are the enemies of truth." Okay. Now, my mum used to barrack for this team. Yes. And she used to sit there and say, "Eat them alive, tigers!" And I was so frightened. I was. So, I wanted to barrack for, um, but I just decided not to. Well, so they had a man-eating skin on the coffins of all the great players. Um, I thought they only did it for him. No, they do. I've done it. Oh, for it's him. a tradition. Okay. Graham now, see, all the great types. He was a uh, William Gro Groper was a, a famous um, artist, a communist artist, fellow mm -hmm. communist, and so he's drawn him. He was for famous for the work he did in the New Masters in particular, which was a, a radical, radical magazine. magazine. Yeah. Yeah. So now this is just a bit of <laughs> next. Fantastic. Now where's the eye? I believe it's in here somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> this is Japanese, isn't it? Very Japanese. Very And minimalist. I wouldn't be surprised. It's a leading Soviet landscape painter. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't be surprised that he's just done it. It might have something to do with it, this particular artist style, mm -hmm. which I don't know about. He might have just been cleaning his brush and gone, hang on, that looks a bit like George Hinsky. Well, that, these things happen, don't Beautiful they? Beautiful piece. Well, I mean, this guy's alive, isn't he? I mean, you can... If you saw him walking down the street, you'd know who he was from the picture. Yeah. Now, I love this. Yeah. Lovely. It's just a solid bang. A face like a clenched fist. That's right. A face like a clenched fist. Mm. Let's get stuck into the Lords. 1950, that was a good year. Mm. Okay. Okay, so he, yeah, so he came back to Australia in 52. So this is, this must have been when he had his, you know, card for the... House of Commons and was drawing the pollies. Yeah, okay. Uh -huh. Oh, we're sticking to the script, are we? Now, this is, um, how, 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 well, what, he would put a piece of paper over that and he, he'd do the brushwork with the, yeah. with the, um... So he'd get a, t a toothbrush, toothbrush and a knife and he'd dip it in the ink and then he'd, you know... But he would cover that off. He'd cover yeah, that yeah, off. Yeah, he'd mask, he'd mask the area he didn't want. Yeah, okay. You know? So that's why you've got a thinner, you know, thinner here. Yeah, but he's done the hand. Yeah. Well, that's nice. I like that. Yeah, I'd like it too, but I, you'd, you'd normally think that the mm. logic... I don't know. As people get older, as you'll see from... We get spots and things on our do heads. We? Yeah. Do we? Do oh, we? We do. Oh. Lady Tweed's, Tweed's Muir. There's not a hell of a lot of women in this Lady book, I've Tweed's got to say. Well, the old guys, when you talk to all the old caricatures, they tell you they don't particularly like drawing women because um, uh, they objectify women, don't they? They make them pretty all the time. No, well, maybe. And if a woman's not pretty, how do you draw her, you know? I just don't think they were probably, they were never called upon to do many women. But it's my experience of drawing women is that women yeah, but love being drawn. That's right. They, they come up to you and they ask you to um, enhance their, their natural I 20, attributes. I've said this before, but I'll get 20 women at a live gig. I'll get 20 women come up to me before a guy will come up to me. Yeah. Now, this is this is his um, his melting candle period, it's was amazing, it? Isn't it? Well, it's the, so, see, this is the beauty of Coonahan. He was he was doing very tight stuff, and then he was working yeah. with crayon, and then he was doing very loose, you know, line. Well, I mean, and he would change, and he I, would change his style to suit the individual, especially he, he in the was, football. So he's used some very thick brushwork here yeah. for the, for this, you know, um, corpulent fellow, Lord Hill. Yeah. And he got Lord paid. Charles Fatty Hill. He got paid for that. Wonderful. Because you can see, 
English women laugh like that. It's wonderful. Even even just that simple line of the teeth. <laughs> English teeth, aren't they? English teeth. English teeth, if you know Well, what I mean. that's right, because American teeth, especially on women, they have an extra five or six teeth in their upper jaw, do. don't they? they? Do. I've always sharks. felt that. Oh, no, look oh, at this. this is my fave. Look at that. Now, what was he? He was the, he was the parliamentary private secretary to Nicholas M oh, Mosley. Well, we know about Mosley, don't we? I wonder with... Uh, no, whether if he didn't particularly like a fellow, he would I a bit have this vision. feeling that he didn't like this guy. Well, look at that. I mean, I mean, that's, that's just a chat. Look and look at the lip. Yeah, you got a little bit of teeth in there. Now, this, this is just, everybody's grandfather. This one. This is just. This is just lay back, yeah, lay back line. Wonderful. And look at this. Put the <laughs> through the air. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, look, he kept it. He kept it loose, and he worked quickly, and he, he just beautiful line. Once you know, changed again. And he's used a, a textured paper here, and yeah. you know, rubbed his crayon over yeah. to fill the. Got a decent neck on him, hadn't he? And created this beautiful texture of the jacket of the coat. This is interesting because I think David Lowe drew this guy in a similar sort of way, but. Um, well, could hand drew Lowe. Wasn't impressed with him. <laughs> <laughs> According to Vane. Well, see, this is, must be very early um, Terry Thomas. Yeah. It's, um, so Vane, Vane got on very well with um, Coonahan. He said, look, he was a, I, I spoke to Vane recently, actually, about okay. uh, Coonahan. We were talking footy and we are talking South Melbourne and we were talking... So Vane used to go down and take photos of the South Melbourne football that's working. Yeah. And... Um, oh, this is Abe Cashy. So I've got... So, Sorry, I'll try and keep... Oh, you want to go, go back? No, 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 no. Okay, no. Right. I'll try and keep one story going. As okay, I move yeah. I always love this because this, I, I looked a lot this like was, this guy when I was wasn't younger. This, wasn't this an ad? <laughs> it was an ad, yeah. So we did ads for... I've got some of the ads in... in yeah, the I've got, yeah, I've got the ad for this. So we did so we did a series of footballers in 1959 for Razorblades and then he did a series of... Um, wrestlers. Wrestlers as well. Look at um, these lines on the back of the hand. I mean, it's just... No one's ever done that before. Fantastic. Like, it's just... It's, it's, you know, Before I went bald, I looked a lot like this, but unfortunately. So what was the story I was telling you about? Oh, so Vane talking about Coonahan. Yeah. And he said, look, he was a very abrasive bloke. You know, like, um, he did, he, not everybody got on with him, and he didn't, That's he said, true. I got on with him quite well. Yeah. Um, they like to think it was the connection of the South Melbourne, not the Communist Party. I'd, I'd believe that. Um, look, look at this shorthand of the pages coming off the newspaper. Isn't that just... I just love those shorthands, how cartoonists come up with them. Yeah, lovely. And but he's a, know, he's just a man dot, who didn't just, suffer fools. And, just a um, dot for the eye. Yeah, and look at the... Look, oh, bang, I hit the camera. Sorry, guys. Um, look at the, the feet crossing over. Yeah. You know, just a simple, very low... Yeah. Kind of low feel, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so um, according to Vane, he, did, he met um, Low, and, uh, the great Low, and had to draw him in the UK. And he said that um, he was a bit disappointed that Low had gone a bit soft. But we all get more conservative as we get older, don't we? Well, he did go a bit soft, but I mean, he was on to Hitler he 12 did. years before anybody else, and actually Hitler had him as his number two on the hit list mm. um, after Churchill. Mm. This is lovely. This is sort of old fashioned style, isn't it? What's, the, what's going on here? Snap. What's that about? Um, this drawing is signed Snap, one of the pen names adopted by Coonahan during the Cold War period when, when he, he suffered, suffered considerable, per, considerable persecution for his political beliefs. Yeah, especially wow. in this country. Isn't that amazing? Now, well, 1950s in Australia were pretty bad. 1800s anywhere else, weren't they? Well, I mean, you know, Menzies, I mean, things were good for some people, but, I mean, you know, um, they, they were, if you're a communist, you're, you're definitely on the outer in those days, you know. There were com commies under every bed in the 50s. Alan Mar Marshall, I met Alan Marshall, uh -huh. and um, he had a hat on, a beret, and you could just see this part of his eyes. And uh -huh. um, he was a... That's his ear... ear, ear earpiece and um, he, he couldn't walk properly because he had um, polio. polio yeah. He could, however, jump puddles. Well, yeah. Now, Judah Watton, he wrote, uh, what's the book called? Jonah. Okay. Great writer. Great great, great Australian writer. Well, I want to... Communist. I want to quickly, yep. so we don't take push too long, on. I want to sort of push through because yeah. I'm going to look at some of the footy 
Yep. Well, no, that, always that'll that be that I always love. That'll be another film. Oh, will it? Yeah. Oh, we'll so we'll film. slow back down then. Okay. Um, this is funny, isn't it? Beautiful. Sort of captured the the the, the hands, the you know the the character of the band. And you know? just to wrap Vane up a little bit, but God, he knew everything about everybody, didn't he? He was so. Uh, in terms of cartoonists and caricatures, Fane was the go-to man, still is. And he's 99, 100 this year. 100 yeah, well, this he, year. I mean, he wrote the Bible, uh, his book on uh, Inked in Image, which is actually a history. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a history of Australian cartooning, but it's also a history of Australian humour, mm. which is remarkable because, um, and he talks about how Australian humour is so delicate mm. and it's all gone to a certain extent. We've gone mid-Atlantic and we've been drowned out by the Americans and the Brits. I love this too. I've got a beautiful um, collection of Vane's work um, that we should, that I'm giving him a folder. It's only with this COVID, I haven't gone around there because it's okay. no spring chicken. Um, but I'm going to give it to him, and we, we should actually sit down and go through and talk about Vane's beautiful work. It's yes, beautiful. I would love to. Uh, I think he was. Of Vane. Yeah, um, great designer. I don't think there's a, there's been anybody like Vane. No, when Rolf when Rolf Heinemann came him, but... came over from Germany, he knew a lot about art. Mm -hmm. Now I just want to look at this one. To me, I always thought this was the best portrait of Queen Victoria. Victoria I've ever seen. Wonderful. But it's, it's Gene Campbell. Yeah, it does look, <laughs> but look just that smiley oh, I can't remember Queen and Victoria. Like, he doesn't have smiling like he that. He doesn't have to draw eyes. No. And I like the breast line. I just don't just, think he draw eyes. Oh, yes he could. Yeah. Yeah. Ian Brewer calling it. Now, do you know him, anything about him? Uh, not much. See, like, the, the, the bits, the least bits out. Mm. He does all this on the fingers, the least bits so out. This was, so we did a play from each team for Blades. So this would have been uh, in 50, Razor Blades. 59? Yeah, 59. So in 59 he did a series of... Um, it, this is Razor Blades? It's, yeah. it's not the, the Sun stuff? No, the, the, for ads. Okay. So this was sort of after he'd left the Sun. Yeah, uh, the Gentle Giant. Roy Wright. So he won two Brownlow's... Uh, uh, Roy Wright, yeah, two Brownlow medals, and that's how you draw socks, just yeah. a couple. Of and he's lines. just got that old, you know, that Ruckman face, you know. Yeah, that, uh, yeah they. He was a lot, a lot looser in '59. His style was a lot looser. This is interesting because it just shows the power of the bloke. Beautiful, um, yeah, and the big hands and the small yeah. ball, and, yeah. and beautiful. Um, he looks like he positive looks, and negative space. Yeah, he looks like a uh, like butchers were, you know, they had big mm. hands and a big solid yeah. bloke. To stand he was. Out. He was a huge man. Now, this is early Barassi. I'd say this is probably the best Barassi ever drawn. You reckon? I mean, everybody's done. Oh, I love this. I can never work out which where his eyes were. Uh, <laughs> which one was his eye? I always look at that for Yeah, well, um, Barassi was a, uh, uh, probably the most influential person in Australian football. Mr. Football, or as Teddy Whitten said, Mrs. Football. That's right. Mr. Football. And I love, look at this little yeah. foot down the bottom. Yeah. It's all mm, down to this, this big... So we'd draw from life, he'd go to um, training, yeah. and he'd go in the rooms and they'd sit for him. I saw him play, was it just Johnny a kid? Gunter. I was just a kid. It was one of the greatest footy photos. Look at that hand and that arm, look at it. Taking it's just... He took a high mark, Johnny Dugdale. Yeah. One of the great footy photos. And look, look at that, look trainer. at that, that rambling leg. Hmm. And I love this too, like some players were really synonymous with their number. Yeah. Well, and, Barassi and was 31. And the way he's expressed blue, you know, with that stick. Yeah, it's North Melbourne. Yeah. It's reflex blue with the kangaroo jumper. Now, I can't believe Teddy Whitten was that young. He was, but, before he got but, old. But look at this poetry mm -hmm. of mine. It's poetry. But that's the beauty of this. And, and he's got these two silly hands at the back hanging on, you know. That's Teddy looked when he was young, you know. He took everything before him. He was take no prisoners and look like butter wouldn't melt in his mouth. Yes. He's yes. still got that determined jaw and... You know. Yeah. You know a lot more than Brad and I do. 25 years, um, yesterday, uh, two days ago, that he did the lap of the G yeah, when he was dying of prostate cancer. Yeah, with his son in the back seat of the car. Great Richmond... Richmondite. Let, let him sing muck. 1962. I think he did this for a book. Uh-huh. I think he did this for a book. Yeah. Um... That's when being a prima donna was a compliment. <laughs> now, the formidable eccentric of the what 
Oh, he was during the army. Okay. Blame me, General Blame me. Uh-huh. I like the other thing about his stuff is how he draws hair. He's a practicing psychiatrist. He looks at. Yeah, but how he draws hair in all his portraits, they're yep. all different. Yep. And it, it's there's almost one, like he uses a different style for each individual. One, there's a beautiful drawing coming up of Mungo McCallum. So, so, so his style became even, yeah, even simpler. Yeah. <coughs> well, yeah. Um, Hugh McRae's a poet and a cartoonist. He, he worked for the. Um, I think he did the Bulletin and also uh, Smith Weekly. He obviously knew him. Mm-hmm. I think he was also a, um, a fellow communist. Yeah, he did draw a lot of um, just before his retirement. Although I think this is well, he, uh, I suppose he died in '86, but he he did a lot of drawings of his friends and yeah. um, acquaintances. Well, that would have taken him bugger all time. Yeah, well, he might have done it a hundred times before he got that well, one right. Yeah, I don't think he drew like that though. Great. Well, this is a great... positive and negative space. Yes. Yeah. Yes, um, and, and the face itself, the line, the continuous the line. Oh, sorry, the continuous line. Just pull that back down a bit, so we're back yeah. in the screen. Okay. okay, the continuous knife. Yeah, uh, you, you, you're a floor, floor manager, are you? Mm. Yeah. No, I've never liked this picture. Okay. Um, but I have a feeling he didn't like him either. I don't know. Just oh, something about it. being painted, etch, illustrator. Bastard. So he'll be, he'll be right. <laughs> well, model builder. He was. He did have very distinctive features, and I remember looking at a, a portrait of Mort, that Mort Drucker did of this guy, of Norman Lindsay, mm-hmm. and I just felt that um, he didn't know anything about him. But I get the feeling that Cunahan knew a lot about Norman Lindsay. Classic caricature with the very small brain pad. But yeah, the, yeah. It's like the heads. You know. Yes. You get, I, I get the feeling that he didn't like this guy. That's all. Oh, maybe. Now this is this is classic. This yeah, is classic. Huge. So he came back in '77 and did a series of uh, Australian greats for. I'm not yeah. actually sure. Um, I thought there might have been posters, but um, this this is also a poster for the Sydney Theatre Company, mm-hmm. but it's been slightly changed. But this is just this is one Roy of the Renee's, most. Uh, yeah. The Mo. Mo Makaki. Yeah. Roy he was Roy a Jewish. Um, um, uh, vaudeville type of um, actor, yeah. And he used to crack jokes like that. Yeah, my favourite actor. Harry Vandersloos. My favourite actress is, um, is uh, you know, uh, he had a, Marlene Dirtrack. All that sort of stuff. Low comedy team. Stiffy yeah. and Moe. Yeah, he was the Mo. Yeah. Adrian Quist. Drawing eyes. Fantastic Davis Cup player for Australia. And went on to be um, a name synonymous with. Having too much to drink. Really? How much is too I'm much? A, I'm a little bit Adrian Quist. How much? Oh, how much is uh, too much? Uh, Whoa! Is this an underhand portrait? He was the this under- is an umbrella. It's an underhand portrait. Hmm. Well, he, he'd be about twenty in, in, when this was done. Yeah. 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 So he's, he's very dad, young. He's I dad, mean, his we'd... dad, his uh, elder brother, told him what to do. So. Yeah. And he was sort of. They were all smashed for doing it, the underarm delivery. Yeah. But, you know, we've moved on. Seriously. Some of us have. <clears throat> yeah, this looks very old. Look at the haircut. Oh, he's a slow bowler. Oh, yeah. Um, I know nothing about him, except he had a big a spinner. Spinner, okay. Ah, Pablo. Yeah, so, uh, I think he bowled pace. Um, he bowled googlies. Yeah, googlies. Yeah, yeah. 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 Obviously, um, uh, I have a feeling he did this for a book or something, or a magazine article or something. A study from notes drawn when Ned Nolkenhan during his European travels but met he, the Spanish-born artist. Ah, oh, he met Picasso him. And did sketches of him. So, because Picasso did these incredible yeah. drawings where he didn't take the pen off the paper, yeah. and they were just one continuous line, and obviously he was influenced by him. Fantastic. Max Meldrum was... Um, now, the beauty had, of this. A, had a school... Uh, a school of uh, art named after him because he yeah, had the end splatter. Yeah, I was trying to be clever before him. Yeah. I thought it was uh, someone else. But he's used a splatter on the beard and a uh, different technique for the hair. Yeah. <laughs> Just uh, he didn't let anything get in the way. With a good drawing, beautiful drawing. So this is. Um, look, look at the hair. So he was doing caricatures like this two years before he passed away. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, the guy never lost it. No. And that's the dream. 
and in um, Percy Granger, who was yeah. Australia's um, foremost composer, although he did most of his stuff in um, England. And look at the hair, he's just... I mean, this is... When it was 84, I see this as 50s. That sort of, you know. But he's... But this looseness, yeah. you know, even if he was... Well, his hand was infirm. But, but his confidence, there. his confidence. Oh, his confidence. His confidence, confidence in the nose and the That's line. right, the confidence, yeah. Fantastic. And look at the way he's wearing this. Yeah. <laughs> just hatching over his... Uh, yeah. Fantastic. Lovely. Yeah, I, I think this was illustrated in a book. Mm. It, t- it tells me it's illustration for a book. He has to add a little bit of extra because it's in a book. Classic. Yeah, as opposed to in, you know something he did in um, in a newspaper. Well, and I think this was just pop, um, popped in to, to bring it up to to, uh, to scratch. But look at this. Oh, so uh, Vane asked him to do them, maybe. Oh, I wouldn't be surprised because he was because this is eighty four. Yeah, and as I say, passed away in eighty six. So yeah, it's a it's a nice picture. Oh. Look at those eyes. Yeah, look at that mouth. And these bits here. There's bits here. Fantastic. I oh. love that. Look at that. It's just beautiful. Yeah, Great I don't think mouth. he particularly liked Andrew mm. <laughs> Peacock. But look at that. Yeah, look at that mouth exactly. Yeah. Like a duck. Like yeah. a beak. Yeah. But it's just so him. And then we have Neville okay. Rand. So, you know, if... Uh, this is wonderful. That if you... If the... The idea is to have likeness. He, he got, even with simple, the yeah. simplicity of line, he always yeah. got a likeness. It always, so um, never missed. But it, it is an old man's drawing, isn't it? Like, oh, I don't know. I think that's, it's so confident. But that's what I'm saying. It's so Such loose. Such a confident line. It's so loose. Well, it's different. That's a lot he, different to the Percy Granger drawing. Oh, I mean, yeah. There's, there's, oh, yeah. Lot, there's so yeah. much confidence in that line. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I mean. He's, he's an old so man. He knows what he's doing. Voice. And oh, of course, fantastic. Now, nobody drew Joe I mean, Bell like this. So this, this guy's is 70, and he's, he's doing caricatures like this. Like yeah. fantastic. Well, hope we all are. Yeah, yeah, okay. And um, and we must finish on an international uh, section here is um, Ronnie Reagan. I think this might be, um, I thought I was reading this this morning, and I found that this is very vain. He is now the most powerful, some believe the most dangerous man on earth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, Went from being a B-grade American actor, he started a lot of he started a lot of economic things that were really rattleless and still affecting us. It's a long time ago. Oh, and of course, look at her hair. I don't think he likes her much. I don't think he likes her much at all. Her conduct in the Falkland Islands War in '82 and her uncompromising stand yeah. against the Australian coal miners in '84. Yes, well, we we can feel. And speaking of the man. Who wrote those lines? This is Vane. Here he is. It was his idea for this book. Now, Vane's got an extraordinary face, and I so many times watched caricatures in a room just looking at him, mm. just looking at him, and, and um, falling in love with that lines of his face, his jowls. Yep, my dream is a um, Galapagos tortoise. You did. You did. Taking his time. Mm. I think he was okay with it. <laughs> I don't think he was hurt. Mm. Well, I mean, they, they live to a great age. Yes, he has. <laughs> he's, he's a terrific guy, mate. Okay, well, this is um, Vane Lindsay's book on... Um, yes. let's, let's do the cover. Let's do the... Thank God for Vane. Yeah, the, this uh, is... Um, talking about our artists and, and, and the custodian of, of all the greats. Yeah. And, uh, and this the book is... The legacy that Vane will leave when yeah. he shuffles from this mortal coil will be invaluable. Yeah. He's already... I like the line going down into the nose. It's actually yeah. faded with this book. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. I've this had this book for a long time. It's well loved. That's Menzies. That's, That's Menzies. Menzies. Yeah. And of course... As Probably not the greatest caricature for the front either, but that happens. Yeah. Mate, a rush job? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know, I don't know if Vane rushed. I think he did things well. Okay, well, this is... Um, the great... This is Unahan. Jim Bridges I and... Think um, one of the greatest caricatures we've ever had. And um, Paul, Paul Harvey. Harvey. That's me. We'll say we'll see you around like a record. Yep, see you guys. See you next time. Bye. Actually, you'll have to see us next time because we're about to do another film on this guy. Enjoy. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks for the sour persimmons, cousin.